This school year has been a difficult one already on some local campuses. We've reported on the alarming fights breaking out at Desert Hot Springs High School during the first semester. Now we're looking into the fights at Coachella Valley High School and what teachers say are systemic issues within CVUSD. As morning anchor Angela Chin reports, at the heart of this is a concerning lack of response from the school board and the superintendent. A warning on this, we are showing videos of school fights and some viewers may be disturbed by the violence. A barrage of blows down to the bone. Reports of broken noses, kids being carried off by ambulance. These students pummel each other, pulled away only when the security guards drag them off. These brutal fights exploded across Coachella Valley High School at the beginning of this year, according to teachers we spoke with. Staff here, burnt out just months in, spoke to us. They did not want to show their faces for fear of retaliation, saying they felt abandoned by administration. They don't have your back. They, can't, they don't support you. There's no consequences. I know for a fact on campus right now, there were, there were several teachers that a student will make a derogatory comment, a racist comment, uh, or will be just flat out harassing and want to physically fight them. And when it's reported, a student is gone for two days and then they return. It's so hard. It honestly is. Um, <sighs> these kids, they just break my heart. They come with so much baggage. And they do come from single households and all they want is structure. That's all they want. CVUSD has long had a higher incidence of school violence resulting in injury than the other two districts in the valley. And it's the only valley district that doesn't have police officers assigned to its campuses getting rid of them back in 2018. A look at records over the past few years show substantially more fights resulting in injury here, even though CVUSD has the smallest school population in the valley. It's not a safe environment for our students. If staff are being injured or hurt, students are being injured and hurt. You know, it, it's a trickle down effect. And you, you, can't, you can't blame our students for um, being hesitant to go to school sometimes because of, of the fear of what's gonna happen on that day. And in the course of my reporting, I found that that fear is very real. I initially had students who wanted to give interviews about how dangerous they felt the campus was, but they ultimately backed out, saying they were scared they would get jumped. And while the Coachella Valley Teachers Association Union had much to say about all of this off camera, they backed out as well, giving a simple no comment to the issues in this report. We also reached out to the CVUSD school board. The president, Joey Acuna Jr., declined to speak with us on December 8th and instead passed the interview to the new superintendent, Dr. Luis Valentino, who has only been in office for five and a half months. But after Valentino's office asked us what we wanted to discuss, stopped responding entirely. KESQ followed up several times and has given his office more than a month to answer and still today, silence from his office. Behavioral issues, though, aren't unique to CV High. The pandemic has exacerbated mental health problems at schools across America. We've seen how COVID-19 has you know, upended a lot of lives and contributed, especially to students, um, to greater academic and, and learning difficulties and mental health difficulties like stress and anxiety and depression. Still, for the violence reported during the first three months of this school year at CV High School, the number of suspended kids due to violence this year is the lowest at CVUSD compared to Desert Sands and Palm Springs Unified. Some teachers accuse CVUSD of trying to make itself look better on paper by keeping suspension rates down. It could explain why school violence with injury is its highest suspension category compared to Desert Sands and Palm Springs, which both have fights without injury as their highest. Either CVUSD has very few fights without injuries or CVUSD chooses to suspend only in the most serious of cases. You have the administrators or the whomever, the district saying, oh, you know what, as long as I don't suspend, show high suspension rates, I can stay here for two or three years and then leapfrog over to my next job, to what I really want to do. See, look at me, look, look, look at the change that I did. 
Another reason for recent low suspension rates? In late 2020, CVUSD took on the restorative justice approach, meaning instead of using punitive discipline on kids who break the rules, they use counseling guidance and mediation in response. The district has said this approach is working, especially at the middle school level. Still, safety, or the lack of it, is top of mind for teachers. When a fire alarm goes off at CV High School, no one moves. Why? Because it's constantly pulled. And then we wait, and then we wait, and then we wait, and then we hear, that was just a false alarm, the systems are not working right now. So one day we're gonna burn up and no one's gonna move, there's gonna be a real fire and we're not gonna go anywhere. We don't move for fire alarms. We don't have lockdowns when there's gun scares. Chronic issues of safety and instability have long plagued CVUSD like its troubled history with its top teacher. In just the past decade, the district has seen a revolving door of five different superintendents. There was Ricardo Medina, fired by the school board. Daryl Adams, who resigned citing health reasons during an ugly showdown with the teachers union. Edwin Gomez resigned for a county job. Maria Gandera abruptly resigned, but still paid out hundreds of thousands after signing an agreement that she would not disparage the district, among other things. And now, Luis Valentino. For reference, the average tenure of a superintendent is six years, according to a Yale study. Desert Sands and Palm Springs have both seen three superintendents in the same time frame, with all past leaders ending in retirement. To be fair, CBUSD does face some tougher challenges. More than 90% of the students here are categorized as high need, meaning they're low income, English as a second language speakers, or require free or reduced lunch meals. There's kind of instability, kind of economically, that comes from either job loss or, or poverty um, that has, you know, effects on your health, it has effects on your mental health. Um, food insecurity is a big one as well. It is certainly a tough job to lift a district entrenched in poverty, but teachers believe the power of change will have to come from students and parents. Parents, I need you to understand that your voice matters. You need to demand the change from your school board, and when they don't give you that change, you need to vote them out. In Thermal, Angela Chen, News Channel 3.